Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am author Sarah Cannon and it is launch week for me, which is so exciting for me. If you've been following me for a while here on Heart Breathings, you know that even though I have published 26 novels now in the last 10 years, it has actually been a full year and a half since I've had a new book release. Part of that is due to having a baby, part of it's due to moving, and some of it is due to spending a lot of time on this YouTube channel and growing it here. So it is extremely exciting for me that I have a new book out. If you would like to support me and pick up my new release, it is called The Witch's Key. And I actually read this live every single day in the month of April as I was writing it over on my other YouTube channel. So if you're interested in watching that process as it unfolds, you can find a video playlist for that down below. But what better time to come to you and talk to you about my top recommendations for how to promote and market at your new release or how to launch your book. So I've got some great tips for you here today and it's a long list, so let's get started. So one thing that I wanna say to you before we even go into any tips is there is no one size fits all way to self-publish your book or to launch your book. You can really customize and tailor your book launch to what you enjoy doing, to what seems right to you, to what resources you have available. So don't let anybody tell you, this is the way you have to do it. Here's the formula. This is the only way you're going to be successful because in indie publishing, we have so much freedom and so much opportunity at our fingertips that there is no one size fit all or you have to do this. It's really a matter of just just picking and choosing what feels right for you, learning from the process, and then getting better next time. Indie publishing really is not about just putting out that one book and having <laughs> millions of dollars of success and then retiring. It's really about building up a readership and a community for a lifetime. So please keep in mind that even though I'm going to give you a lot of tips and a lot of ideas, you don't have to, and you're definitely not expected to implement all of these for your first book launch. Some of them will be more effective for your first book. Some will be more effective for later books in your series or in your career. So I'm gonna just give you a bunch of different tips and then try something each time you launch a book. So for book one, you might try two or three things on this list. You might pull from lists online, but whatever you do, just know that it's a learning process and your book launch is really just a day or a week in the life of a book that is so long. In traditional publishing, they put a lot of pressure on launch week and the pre-order for a book. And if that book doesn't sell out or have a huge following right away, sometimes they'll drop an author. But that's one of the advantages to being indie. You could really start small and then grow huge over time. And so don't sell yourself short. I look at it like... Having a baby that day they are born is really just one day in a very long and beautiful life of a human being. The book launch day for your book is an important day, but it's really just one day or one week in the life of your book. I sold maybe 10 copies, maybe somewhere around 12 copies the very first day I launched a book, and I was ecstatic about that. Don't put pressure on yourself to sell thousands of books your first week. It's okay to grow slowly and to grow with each book that you put out because that like 10 book launch day eventually led to over three quarters of a million books sold and over a million dollars in profit. So it can grow and don't judge yourself based on one book or one day. So that little caveat aside, let's talk about some of my top tips for launching your book. So my first tip is less about the marketing and more about managing yourself and your time. The tip is to create a checklist and a plan for your launch. So what you need to do is gather all of the information that you've found through this YouTube video, through other blogs you've read, and by talking to other authors, decide which things you're going to try so that you can narrow it down. It's not about throwing spaghetti at the wall. It's about deciding what really works for you right now and focusing in on making those four or five things really, really strong. Because if you focus in on having an amazing book launch with just four or five things, you're going to be better off than if you 
tried to just halfway do 12 or 13 things. So I highly recommend that you create a checklist of the things you want to try for this particular book and then schedule them out. So if you're going to do teasers, which we'll talk about in a second, schedule out exactly when and where you're going to post those. Figure out what you need to have set up so that you can get all of that ball rolling. Having a checklist and a plan in place is imperative because otherwise you do end up just throwing spaghetti at the wall. If you would like a free checklist of everything you need to decide and do before you can self-publish your book, like getting ISBNs, your cover art, deciding your keywords, all of those types of things, I do have a free checklist on my newsletter list. I have an entire Google Drive full of resources for you from how to plot your novel to everything you need before you self-publish. So sign up for my list in the link down below in the description box, and I will send you a link to that entire Google Drive full of freebies. If you happen to have a lot of lead time before your book, like you've got three to six months before your book is coming out and you're still writing it or you're still getting ready to launch it, then you have plenty of time to start to build your author platform. So I don't recommend that you start a Facebook page and a Twitter and an Instagram and a YouTube channel and get on Wattpad and do a website like all at once. Just pick the one place where you feel like you're gonna show up best. So for example, if you're really great on video and you have really good energy and you already have all the equipment you need, go ahead and try a YouTube channel. Just know and understand how much time goes into promoting YouTube videos. Or if you are really great at taking gorgeous photographs and writing catchy captions that mean something to people, then start an Instagram account. But whatever you do, choose one place where you feel like you're going to show up really well, learn how to engage with people, start to build a community there, and that will begin to grow your author platform. Even if it ends up just being 25 or 50 people who are following you over the next few months, that is your launch group. That is your people that are going to be ready to support you when that book comes out. And that is better than starting from zero. Another tip for launching your book is to tease your release before it starts coming out. So whether that's like a week from now, or it's six months from now, if you have that author platform set up, and you have a blog or a website set up, go ahead and start telling people, hey, I'm a new romance author, I've got this amazing new book that's coming out hopefully sometime before the end of the year. Start filling people in on what's happening in your world, what's your process, what other types of authors you like, Google content marketing and then start doing that as often as you can. That is another great way to start not only building a platform for yourself, but also getting your name out there and letting people know that, hey, you've got a book coming out and then you can springboard that to a lot of these other tips. So having a website, first of all, is another great thing to have. So even if you're posting on Instagram, you can also send people from Instagram over to your website where you're blogging about your process or about your book release that's coming up. So part of teasing it ahead of time could be creating countdown images where you say two weeks till release or five days, three, two, one. And you could also make images throughout that are just like teaser Tuesday. So for the next six months, you have some kind of graphic that you've done that matches the branding of the genre that you're writing and has maybe a quote or something about one of the characters or who they are. And you're letting people know every single Tuesday day on your Facebook page, for example, something about this book or a little bit of a quote from one of your chapters that gets their interest up a little bit and gets them interested just keeps your book and your process top of mind so that they keep coming back to read more teasers. Another idea for teasing ahead of time is to post teasers or even sample chapters on your blog or in your newsletter. So if you already go ahead and get your newsletter started ahead of time before you've actually launched your book, then that's going to help you launch your book even stronger. So that's my next tip for you is to go ahead and set up a newsletter. You can get free newsletters at multiple places. So I'll link a few of them down below. So until you have maybe a 1000 subscribers, it's going to be totally free. But having that newsletter already set up gives you a place to collect email addresses. Now, if you're posting on Instagram, you know as well as I do that even if you have a thousand followers and you make a post about your new release, only a very small percentage, maybe 10% of those followers or less are going to actually see that post. However, if you have a mailing list of a thousand people and you send out an email that says the new book has launched, 
probably you're going to get more like 30 to 60% of them are going to see and open that email. So a newsletter is extremely important when it comes to launching and you can go ahead and start growing it even if it's very slowly one subscriber at a time before you've even launched your book. So you have that social media platform if you encourage people say get the latest teaser of my book or see the latest behind the scenes for my author career or how the book is going, get these updates, sign up for my newsletter list. You can put links on your Facebook page, in your link in bio on Instagram and all over the web and people will start joining your list. So this is a great way to go ahead and get people engaged with you so that when you launch that book, you've got an audience to do so. The same thing goes for when you have multiple books out. If you put something in the back of each book that says, if you loved this book and you want news for when the next book comes out, sign up for my newsletter list. When they sign up, now you've got a place to let them know that book two is coming out. That is one of the most important things that indies need to have is that newsletter list. So I recommend setting it up as soon as you know your book is coming out. Another thing you can do to start building up buzz and to launch your book really well is to plan a fun cover reveal. Readers love to see the cover of a book, especially if they've been hearing about it for the past few months. Oh, they know you're working on it. You're, they're getting excited about it. They've seen all these teasers. You can also tease them about the book cover is coming. You can also use this as a way to get them onto your newsletter list. So if you've been teasing your book release and the fact that you've got a book coming out, you can say to them, be the first to see my brand new cover for XYZ book, sign up for my newsletter. You'll get it a week before everyone else. Then you do an exclusive cover reveal to your newsletter subscribers only, and then to the rest of the public, maybe a couple days or a week later. This gives people incentive to sign up for your list. Then when you reveal your cover on social media, you can do it in a fun way if you'd like. There are lots of ideas of how to do this, but just a couple of them are to create a sort of puzzle piece of your book cover in Canva, where you're just showing maybe the top right corner of the book or the bottom left corner of the book or just a little piece in the middle. So you're showing them pieces of the cover, but not the whole yet over the course of say five to seven days. And then on the seventh day, boom, there's the whole cover. And it's something fun that people can see. And you can even engage them with posts of like, what do you think is hidden over here in the corner and that sort of thing. Some other ideas for a fun cover reveal would be to create free digital wallpapers that you can post on your blog so that when you reveal the cover, you can say, come get a free desktop wallpaper to put on your computer or a free phone wallpaper that you can post on your phone and then have them take a screenshot, post it in your Facebook group. Then if they show like with a screenshot that they've got your book cover as their desktop wallpaper or whatever, you can enter them into some kind of contest to win a $5 Amazon gift card or a free copy of the ebook when it comes out, that kind of thing. You can also encourage people to change their profile pic on Facebook to your book cover. So there's lots of fun things you can do. So if you want Want more information on fun cover reveal ideas, let me know in the comments. Another tip for great book launches are to give away ARCs. So I've had a lot of questions about what's the difference between a beta reader and an ARC reader. So a beta reader is someone who's going to read your book in advance and actually give you feedback so that you can change your book. They're kind of like an editor to a degree. They're giving you feedback on what works and what doesn't work in your story. ARC readers are just advanced reviewers. So these are people that you've selected to get your book in advance so that on launch day, they will leave a review. So they're basically getting a free copy of your book in exchange for leaving that review. Reviews are extremely important. So as many reviews as you can get during your launch week, the better. This is another reason to go ahead and have that author platform before you launch your book, because this is where you're going to find your advanced readers. You can post in Facebook groups and things like that, but you're really going to find your best and most quality advanced reviews from your own community. So go ahead and start building that community up through Facebook, Instagram, or whatever platform of your choice, so that when you're getting close to the book coming out a few weeks in advance, you can say, hey, who is interested in getting an arc of this book, and we'll read it in advance for 
exchange of a review on release day. Some people will do this months in advance. Some people will just do it the week before. It's really up to you how far in advance. Just keep in mind that if you do it really far in advance, you might end up with some people that will send your book and pirate it. So I try not to do this too far in advance personally, but that's just a personal choice. Another place that you can ask about ARCs is bookstagram accounts. So if you are on Instagram, there are lots of bookstagrammers out there who make beautiful photos and really do promote books really well. So if that is your jam and Instagram is your platform, reach out to bookstagrammers, be very kind and understanding even if they don't have time to respond to you and offer them a free copy of your book in exchange for a review and an Instagram post. My next tip is to cross promote with other authors in your chosen genre. So again, another reason to go ahead and start getting into the author community, the reader community, wherever it is you like to interact. It doesn't matter if it's Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, wherever you happen to show up best, wherever you're building that platform for yourself, reach out to other authors, especially if they're writing what you write. Now this comes with a caveat because I do know lots of young authors will sometimes think sky's the limit. I'll reach out to the these famous traditionally published authors or these really like high best-selling New York Times best-selling indie authors and then they'll get very mad if those people don't respond to them. Just keep in mind that authors are super busy so you can send out a lot of requests for cross promotion and the majority of people are not going to respond to you. The best way to get cross promotion is not to just send out a bunch of emails to famous authors. The best way to get cross promotion is to get involved in the community, get involved in Facebook groups of other authors who write similar things to you and then start talking to them. And the more you get to know them and the more friends you start to make, then you're going to have authentic connections where you can say, hey, I've got a book release coming out. Would you mind promoting it to your newsletter list? And then when you have a release, I'll promote to my newsletter list. You could even do a Facebook event or an Instagram event. You could do a cross promotion on YouTube or wherever your platform for your readers is. But it takes that authentic communication. You're going to have so much more <laughs> success with this if this is someone that you've actually spoken to outside of asking them for help. But the more communities you join and get really involved with, the more likely you are to meet people that will be great to cross promote with. I would not recommend that you cross promote with someone who's a friend that's writing in a totally different genre. So if you're writing young adult paranormal, it's not going to do you any good. And actually it will harm you to cross promote with the, your friend that writes adult psychological thrillers. Those two things are not going to mesh well. And you really want for your sales to reflect people who like reading the kinds of books that you write. So only cross promote with writers who write in the same or similar genre to you. Another thing that you can do is to create and advertise a lead magnet. So I won't go too deep into this. If you want to see deeper videos on any of these topics, please let me know or join my mailing list so that you'll know when my course Publish and Thrive reopens this fall because we do go deeper into a lot of this stuff as well as the basics of self-publishing in that course. A lead magnet is basically something that you're going to offer for free that attracts readers to your newsletter list. So it could be, let's say this is book one of my Beautiful Demons series, my Shadow Demon Saga. I could write a prequel to this or another type of side story, or I could even just package up the first three to five chapters and offer that for free as a lead magnet on my blog or my author platform. So here I am on YouTube. Let's say my author platform is here on YouTube. I could let you guys know, hey, download the prequel to my upcoming book and get to know these characters ahead of time, get it for free. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter list. You can promote it on your own platform. You can ask other authors that are your friends in a similar genre, same of that cross promo to help get the word out about your lead magnet, your free thing that you're offering in exchange for signing up for your newsletter list. You can also use a service kind of like book funnel. And there are other types of services out there like that where readers are looking for free books and they'll sign up for your newsletter list in exchange for that free, free book. Just be aware that in terms of your newsletter list, those are kind of like cold leads. There are people that are interested in your book. They want to get it for free. 
but they're not people who have already read your book. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to get people on your list that have not yet read it and are just looking for that free book. It's a, it's a numbers game. So again, I could talk about this more in the future if you'd like. You could even create a landing page on your website for your new book that you could be advertising the new book and say, want to get the first couple chapters for free and get a sneak peek, sign up for my newsletter here. So you kind of get the idea of what I'm saying. You could even go so far as to take out Facebook ads or Instagram ads for your upcoming book or for your lead magnet. So let's say I have a prequel to Beautiful Demons that's coming out in October. I could go ahead and start now in May to let people know about that free prequel novel or novella that they can sign up for. So I could be running Facebook ads telling people sign up for this free book. And then once they get on my newsletter list and they already like these characters, they're primed for when this book releases, they're ready to buy it when they get their new release notification. Another tip for new releases and for really launching that book is to spend some time creating sorry, you can hear the baby upstairs, is to spend some time creating a hook or a cool, catchy tagline for your book. So think about something that's really short, just a punchy one-liner. I do have a video on creating these, so look for that down below that you can use in advertising. And whenever someone asks you, like, what's your book about? You have what some people would call an elevator pitch, which might be a couple of lines, or you just have that one hook sentence, that tagline that you can use in advertising, you could use on teasers. So just since we're talking about my book, Beautiful Demons, I had several of these. So I spent an entire like afternoon brainstorming teasers for this or hooks for this or taglines. So some of the ones I came up with were dark secrets hide within because you've got the house in the background. So dark secrets hide within. Another one I used was this small town has a big secret. And the third one and most popular one that I used was never trust the popular girls. And these are things that I used in advertising. They were things I used on my blog post to really get people's interest. So take the time to come up with that great tagline that's going to make people go, ooh, what's that about? That looks really interesting. Some other release day things that you can do is you can set up a blog tour or a release blitz. Now there are, depending on your genre, companies out there like blog tour companies that will help you or PR companies that will help you set up a blog tour blitz. So this could be that you did some extra blog posts that they're going to send out to different people. It could also just be that you know, 50 or 100 blogs out there that are book bloggers are going to announce your release with all the links and you just pay like $100 or something to get this big blitz. These types of things used to be a lot more effective back probably in like 2012 or 2013 and before, they're not as effective in most genres in 2020. Maybe romance, maybe a few other things, but it doesn't mean they're not worthwhile, especially if you're just starting out. So maybe ask around. I don't really have anyone that I recommend off the bat, but if you ask around, you might be able to find. And if you know a great book blog tour or PR company, go ahead and put it down in the comments below and help your fellow authors out. But this is another way that you can actually pay for kind of a blitz where you have a hundred different blogs mentioning your book on release week and that can help to boost your sales and visibility. You might also consider having an online release party. So let's say your platform is a Facebook group and you have 100 members in your Facebook group. You could let them know in advance that next week on Monday when my book launches, we're going to have an online release party and you can create all kinds of events. You can do a gift party where everybody has to put their favorite celebration gift in the comments. You could do some giveaways. You could talk about your favorite movies that are similar to teen books. You could just come up with maybe 10 or 15 posts that you'll post throughout the day. You can also get other authors involved. So this is where the cross promotion comes in that you say, hey, invite your friends into your Facebook group as administrators or moderators and see if they'll do some posts for a couple of hours and do some giveaways of their own books. And this is a great way to cross promote, but also get people excited about the book. Then they're going to be seeing those Facebook posts come through all day long and they're going to be like, oh yeah, I got to buy that book. So that can be a fun way to promote the launch. I personally have been doing 
three lives this week, Monday, Wednesday, and I will have one today at 4 p.m. where I am having an online release and launch party. I've been doing giveaways, Q&As, coffee chat. It's just been a lot of fun. We also did at the end of this reading where people got to know The Witch's Key, we kind of had a finale party for the last episode of The Witch's Key, and we did Moon Dust Cupcake. There's a cafe in the book where they sell these cupcakes, and so we had special recipes and everybody posted online with their cupcakes and they brought them to the party. They also brought their favorite coffee drink to the party and we dressed up like in witchy clothes and different things like that. So you can do fun things like that and have people share their images. This works particularly well either here on YouTube or on Facebook and Instagram and you can create your own special hashtag for your release. Another idea is to come up with special launch pricing. Now, this is a place where you really need to decide. Remember, I was talking about that checklist and coming up with what's going to work for you and what isn't. If your goal is to make as much money as you can because you really need the money to pay for edits and cover art for your next book, then you might not want to do a special launch price. However, if your main goal is just to get as many people into your book as possible and you don't mind if you lose a little bit of money on your release week or if you just don't make a lot of money on release week, you might run a 99 cent sale. That's what I did with my first actual two books. I offered them at 99 cents. Then when book three came, Came out, I had a really strong following at a full price book. So it's up to you if you want to do a launch strategy or a launch pricing. My biggest warning about this is if you're going to offer a special discounted price at launch, offer it for everybody who is first in line. Some authors have gotten in trouble by having like a three or four ninety nine book, and then the week after launch, when sales were getting lower, they dropped the price to ninety nine cents. It sounds really cool because it's going to boost your book up in ranking. However, it really is terrible for the people that were your most loyal fans that bought that book at $4.99 and now feel like you kind of screwed them because you dropped the price. And now they're going to be thinking, well, I'm never buying her books at full price ever again. I'm going to wait for the sale. So if you're going to do a launch price, make sure that is the price at launch or pre-order. And then you raise the price later instead of dropping it. And a launch, special launch price doesn't have to be all the way down to 99 cents. If your normal price is going to be $4.99, you could tell people it's going to be a dollar off. It's only $3.99 for launch week. Grab it now before it goes up in price. Another thing you can do is actually advertise your release. So there are different newsletter subscribe subscriptions out there that will advertise your new release. Like I think Choosy Bookworm is one. There are multiple and I don't have a list of them here with me now, but there are multiple ones. So you can do some research on your own to find different newsletter places that have newsletters of book buyers that are willing to promote your book to their readers. One of the biggest, of course, is BookBub. So when you've got a new book coming out, you might have to wait until after the book is out, but then you you can claim your BookBub author dashboard where BookBub will actually send out new release announcements. But when you're just getting started, you might not have a following yet on BookBub, but you can pay BookBub to send out a new release alert in your genre. So for example, if I had a new young adult book coming out, I could pay BookBub, I don't know how much it is, say $100 to send my book out as, guess what, there's this new release from a new author to all of their like 75,000 or 100,000 followers in the young adult genre. It could be a lot more than that, I'm not sure. You can always advertise as well on Facebook ads or you can advertise on AMS, which is Amazon Marketing Services. This is something that can get expensive super fast and you're gonna need to do your research and learn how to set these ads up, but this is definitely a way that you can spend money to gain visibility for your new release. If this is not your first book, so let's say since I've got this book right here, I'm using it as an example. So this series for me has 10 books. When I launch book 11 in the series, I will promote book 11 to my current fans that I know are already reading this series. But the second part of my launch plan is going to be to drive new people to the very first book in the series because I want to always have new people coming into that first book. This 
this book is free always, not paperback, but in ebook, it's free. And actually my first three books are free because it's such a long series. And the first few books are really short, as you can see. So I offer the first three books as a loss leader. And every time I have a new release in that series, I promote the heck out of the first three free books. I promote these much more than I do my new release because my new release, the fans that are loyal to that series are going to want to pick it up. So my main job is to let them know that the book is here. So I do all of that stuff I was talking about, cross promotion, advertising, cover reveals, all of that stuff to let current fans know the book is coming. Loss Leader, however, like a first book free or dropping the first book to 99 cents is a great way to bring in new readers to your series so that you're always growing that audience. This next tip is one that seems super easy, but you wouldn't believe how many authors overlook this. Make sure that you add your new release everywhere you can. So put it on Goodreads, make sure that you let people know the new cover so that they can add it to their TBR list, add it to your actual website where you have a page that is dedicated to that book with all the link where they can buy it. Then you want to make sure that if you're posting on Instagram or you're posting on Facebook, wherever your author platform is, that you let people know and post on social media where that book can be bought. A lot of times I will see authors, even authors who are wide, just post their link to Amazon. But if you're selling your book at Apple Books and Barnes and Noble and Google Play and Kobo, you've got to include those links too. So make sure that you're putting your links to buy and make it super easy for readers to find it. Put it on your website, put it on your blog, put it on your homepage. So it's super easy. It's really nice to find it. Put it in your Instagram link and bio. Make sure you put it on your Facebook page or whatever social media you have. Add it to Goodreads. Add it to your author page at Amazon. Make sure that you make it easy for readers that want to buy your book to figure out where and how to buy it. Another simple tip is to have no shame in promoting it to your friends and family, especially if you're just getting started. I know a lot of us can be like, oh, you know, I don't want to bother people. But when you're just getting started, this is your audience. You may have a small author platform, but your family and your closest friends want to support you too. And there is no shame in going to them and saying, hey, my very first book has just come out. I would love for you to go and grab it and support me. So if you're just getting started, don't forget the value of asking friends and family to go pick up that book. Now there are some rules just as a caveat on Amazon against your friends or a close family member leaving a review for your book. So I would avoid that to not get in trouble, but they can certainly buy it and support you in that way. These last two tips are not so much about how you can market your launch, but instead more about how you can handle your launch emotionally. So one of the final tips I have for you is don't compare yourself to other authors. So often we are looking at numbers, we're looking at rankings and reviews, and we're looking at other people, maybe people who have 10 or 20 books out, and we're seeing ourselves in comparison and we're thinking, oh man, I'm never going to have that. And I really suck. And my launch didn't go really well. Or you see somebody in a Facebook group talking about how they made $15,000 with their very first book, you know, and then you compare yourself to that. And you have this launch that you feel like is very small because you only sold 29 copies of your book. And it can lead lead to not only a negative spiral emotionally, but it can lead to bitterness in your career. Where the truth is, most of those people who are saying things like, I made $15,000 on my first book ever, are doing something extra, like spending $15,000 on Facebook ads. Very few people just come right out of the bat as an indie with their very first book and make tens of thousands of dollars, not unless they've done extreme amounts of marketing, or they've spent a lot of time building up their author platform. If you have a large author platform, you can launch bigger than someone who doesn't have an author platform. So it's up to you how much time you want to spend and how much money and energy you want to spend setting that up before you get started. I spent no time and energy. Nobody knew who I was. I just put that book out there, told my friends and family and kept writing. As each book came out, I grew a little bit and a little bit more. Some people go a different route and they will spend fifteen or twenty thousand dollars getting that book release ready to go, or they'll spend three years on their YouTube channel getting ready for their launch. There is no right or wrong way. So stop comparing yourself. Trust me, it is going to lead to nothing but negativity and bitterness. You are doing great. 
just as you are. Whether you sold 10 books or a thousand books on your launch, you're doing great and you can always build from where you are. Comparison is gonna do nothing but slow you down. The final tip is to have fun with it. You have spent your whole life wanting to write a book or a series of books. You've wanted to be an author, you've wanted to build this up and really whether this is a new dream for you or a dream you've had since childhood, you are doing it and if you've made it to the point where you're launching a book, oh my gosh, you should be so proud of yourself. That is huge and that is farther than the majority of people get who want to write a book. So you made it that far. Now it's time to just have fun with it. Don't put any pressure on it. See it as a learning process. And truthfully, there is no failure in this. There's just learning more and more lessons. It's really an iterative process. You're going to try things. You're going to get the book launch out there. Maybe you'll be extremely successful beyond your wildest dreams on your first launch, or maybe you'll sell 10 books. But celebrate those 10 books because 10 books is a huge accomplishment. It's so much better than never having finished your book and never putting yourself out there. So the next thing you do is focus on the next book and then selling 10 or 15 copies of that one. Then the next book and selling 50 or 100. It's okay to grow slowly and it's okay to really have fun with it and to celebrate each and every sale that comes in. Even after 10 years of publishing almost in October, it'll be 10 years. When I put this book out on Tuesday, it was just so life affirming to even see, you know, five, 10 sales coming in because it was like, oh my gosh, after a year and a half of being away and several people telling me, oh, you're going to ruin your career by taking a break. Indies can't take a break. I was a little bit nervous and scared about putting this next book out, especially because it was the first book in a new series and it did phenomenal. It was number one at Apple in my category. It was had the number one new release flag on Amazon. I sold well over 500 copies right there in pre-order before the book even came out. And it's just continuing to do really well. And even though I'm not at the level where I was two years ago, because I've had this lag, I'm not getting depressed about that. I'm not letting that get me down because you know what? I still have that loyal following and I will be grateful for every single sale that comes in because that is a reader that took a chance on me that is there to support me and that hopefully I am supporting them by giving them a great fun book to read. So have fun with it. Keep a positive attitude and keep learning as you go. All right, guys, long video and there is so much more I could say about each one of these these points. So let me know down below in the comments which ones of these you would like to see more expanded videos on where you'd like to see me give you more examples or more details on how to do it. And also don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Go pick up my new release, The Witch's Key. I would love to have you start that series with me. It's super fun and we'll be starting a live reading of season two sometime later this summer over on my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel, which is for my readers. So come subscribe over there. And thank you all so much for being a part of this video and this community today. I am sincerely wishing you the best on your book launch. And if you're just getting started and you really want a lot more details about how to go through the process of self-publishing from A to Z, like everything from starting your business to how to decide whether to go into Kindle Unlimited or not, to how to format your books and get cover art and betas and all of that, then I would love to have you sign up for my newsletter list and look forward to my Publish and Thrive course that will launch again this fall, probably in early August. So look out for that. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. And and I will see you in my next video. Bye.